What's good, everybody? This is Ray Daniels, a.k.a. The Culture Referee, and I'm here to talk to you about Two Lost Distribution. They are one of the most technologically advanced distributors in music. They distribute to more stores than any distributors around. They distribute, uh, they give you 100% of your royalties. They only charge you $3 a month, and you have an instant option to get an advance from these guys. So if you're watching this and you want to be in the music business and you're trying to figure out how to get help, I'm here to tell you, go to twolost.com and use the word God's as your coupon code and you get the first three months free hey everyone it's your k verde and queen dream what's good it's the heartbreak kid jack dance (laughs) this is ray daniels aka the culture referee (laughs) (laughs) and today this is the culture report (laughs) you make every every time you come with a different one i gotta do that man this shit is like wrestling man okay so (laughs) yeah let's clap so uh before we get started man just shout out to our sponsor shout out to two loss distribution uh if you're an artist out there and you're looking for distribution you go to two loss.com and enter in gods as your code and you get three months of distribution free and it's three dollars a month going forward so it's a pretty good situation for you guys uh shout out to Toten carry uh if you need luxury bags why are you traveling and you ain't securing the right bags you can go Toten carry and shout out to kl alkaline water yeah, also, Yoko Vodka. Now, let's get into the show. Like, subscribe, all that other good stuff. Let's get into the show. And um, let's have some fun. Let's, let's talk. get into it. Okay, so Usher came out to Caught Up, which we talked about. Hold on. Can we, let's address Tamira. Okay, let's do it. Um, and the reason why, by the way, I wouldn't want to do it. But the reason why is I saw comments where people were saying they don't like that when people remove people from shows or people go on shows and they don't address it because this is a podcast and we talk about business so why we don't talk about our business right so basically uh and she and she talked about it she did an interview yeah um and um kind of lot (laughs) yeah well she said it was time to go but what it really what really happened was was that so okay let me give you guys a story of the show when when i started uh tamira came on the show uh, it wasn't a show. Tamir was just my homegirl that would pull up, ask me questions, and that's what we do. Um, what happened was was that we start the sh- we started doing the show. It started taking off, and then it was kind of like it was really kind of hard for me because I was paying all the money out, right. like I was paying money out to everybody. So it was really hard for me to maintain everything. But what was really going on was as I was trying as I was paying money, I was trying to make money, but. I had people on my team that felt like, you know, they deserve more money. By the way, this is not Tamira. This is just me telling you about, like, the history. Right. Um, Because I paid Tamira every month to be on the show. And everything was good. But uh, it's funny because it's this guy who we know. Sucker. I ain't going to even say his name. (laughs) And he he would come here all the time. It start like snoozing around, like yeah. which I got going filming days. Just pop up one of them, one of them right. pop up niggas and say he in a spot. <laughs> so he popped up, and next thing you know, he was moving her around. And my thing that I tell everybody is, is that if I pay you, I you know the day I need you. We shoot on Wednesdays. Everybody who knows knows. I shouldn't have to give you a warning that I need you at a certain time on Wednesdays. So if you go back and watch the little scrappy interview. Tamira left mid-interview. Yeah, I seen that. She just left because she had to go do something that this guy has set up. Right. Uh, which is re- really weird. I wonder if iHeart knows that their employee is out here poaching talent. <laughs> like, I feel like I might be able to sue iHeart. Their yeah. employee's poaching talent and then hitting Jack talking shit about me and then mm-hmm. think that I'm supposed to just leave her on the show. So mm-hmm. I wanted to part ways with her. And... And it was one more thing that she did, just for total transparency. I didn't like, when Tamira came on the show with me, she really didn't have a brand. It was, she was a girl from Harlem. She had the, the, the girl from Harlem uh, foundation, and she was doing that. But what I mean by that is that she didn't have a brand. She wasn't like who she is now. She wasn't a content creator. Yeah. So I think that as the God show grew, she was trying to find herself, and I wanted to help her find herself, mm-hmm. by the way. Yeah. And in finding herself, it didn't match the brand that I wanted to be associated with. Like, I, want, I don't want to talk about people. I don't want to gossip about people. I want to make the world better. Right. And it was a particular video she did where, ironically, it was two videos. The first one was she did where she's speaking about Spanish men. 
and this certain iHeart employee was a Spanish guy. Mm. That's how I introduced them because he called me like I was offended by your partner, and she did all she said something about Spanish man, and I was like, really? So I I was and, like, and not only did he call you, he DM me, and he hit up my brother. So I'm he made a, he made a too, big like deal shitting like shitting on her yeah. about how she was a fucked up like what she said about Spanish people and he liked yeah. her and he supported her so he did that and then all of a sudden he was managing her now oh wow so that was one but the other one was Tamira did a video where she was doing her Tamira thing and she was speaking about a girl who was suing Takeoff okay and as we all know Takeoff has, has passed away and she was basically saying like hey. Take off, don't die on me if you got coins. And I'm like, oh no. Yeah, and I'm That's like, you know, I'm like, I've been knowing Coach for 20 years. Yeah. And mm -hmm. me and Pete go back about 10. So it just looked like I'm, I'm supporting this person who's doing all of this stuff. And I just got to the point where it was a whole lot of things that happened. I just was like, I just was thinking it was time to part ways. Yeah. Uh, and the crazy thing is that I still think that she's going to shine and be a star. But I didn't like the interview she did with SO. I didn't like how they was trying to push it. Like, S.O. was like, so with the money, like, S.O., I have no money problems. Right. Let me put that out there to everybody. You'll never hear somebody say, I, I fell out with Ray about money. I pay all my bills. I pay everybody who I owe. I don't play. We don't have, I don't fall out about money, but I am big on value. For sure. And if I feel like your value is one thing and my value is another thing, which is what I think really was happened with Tamira, that's what it really was. I just think that we had we were going in different directions. And to all the people watching, I, I understand how y'all feel, but I just couldn't do it no more. I just couldn't work with someone who was putting out the kind of content that she does. I, that's not something that I want to do. Right. I didn't want to be Wendy Williams. I, I was more looking to be first take. Right. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I think that as she started getting her brand, she, she invested in it. And be honest with you, I think she's dope as fuck and I think she's a star and I'm glad that I was a part of the journey helping her get there. But I did like the way she placed the interview and I also, for anybody who follows me knows, I don't be putting business out there but I had to put it out there. Oh yeah, and I also didn't like how she tried to play me with that Tim's video. I didn't like that shit. I didn't like that because- I missed that one. Because by the way, it doesn't, I don't care if we talk shit now. Yeah, like right. talk shit to me. But Go back she screenshotted it. <laughs> And zoomed in on my boots like Ray got on the wrong boots. Like I, I, I'm paying you to pay. I pay you to pay your bills. You what shouldn't. What you worried about my boots for? The point is that I, I, my problem, yeah. the perspective is wrong. Yeah. I would never make fun of if I got billionaire friends. I would never make fun of what they have on right. because I want to be like them. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't do that. So to me, it's little things like that. That's like, oh, you don't really want to go we up. Supposed to be a team. But it's not even that. I don't, listen, we clown Jack, right. but I'm not gonna zoom in on it. I'm not going to keep drilling on it. <laughs> I'm not going to make it a thing on Instagram. Yeah. Like, y'all seen Jack? Jack, bitch, look at Jack. Look at and zooming on his face with him like, <laughs> I wouldn't do that to him. Because that right. to me, that's taking it far. I, I didn't know I'd get clowns. Huh? <laughs> this is the first I've heard of it. That's my point. Oh, see? What, what I, I mean, maybe like the verse shit. That's my point. That's I what, don't know. That's what I'm talking about, though. I'm one of the flyest podcasts in the world. So <laughs> niggas is definitely ain't going ain't to fucking um, ever, you know, they ain't going to talk no drip shit with me. I'm from no, Queens. No, listen. I'm not, here, I'm not here to argue drip shit with Jack, <laughs> but I am saying that I didn't, I just didn't like it. So for me, you know, and I don't, and I don't know if people listen to this. No, I'm really in the music business. For sure. Like I am in the music business 24, seven, 365. I got a lot going on and I'm not in the content edutainment business enough to damage relationships for the sake of a view. Right. And I know she don't have those relationships like I do. Yeah. And, and and I'll say the last thing I always told her, I always, I always just wanted her to find her why. Yeah. Like, it's okay to say men deserve nothing, but why? It's okay to say you are, you are, you're not a fan of white people, but why? It's never really a reason. It's, and that always bothered me because yeah. I'm co-signing this shit. And, you know, when you sit on this couch, I'm basically co-signing you at some point. And I just didn't want to be a part of that. And. I love her to this day. I want, I, but by the way, I know she's gonna win. And everybody's sure. like, "Who's this girl?" Let me tell you, who this girl is this girl is somebody who I trust. And to be honest with you, I'd rather work with people I trust sure. than work with people who. And I don't not trust Tamira because Tamira didn't do nothing slick to me. But the nigga she in business with, I don't trust him yeah, at all. That was straight a dick ride. Yeah, yeah, he's a, like he's a, and and you know I don't trust him at all. So and I think he was mad because like 
He invited you to a game and you this couldn't nigga, come. This, see, this, the, this, this, like this, this, the little, huh? this, the little kids. <laughs> no, that's not sassy. This, the little kid shit that happens in this game. Guys like him, who feel like I, he's on my level. I don't feel like he's on my level or not on my level. I don't even look at it like that. You don't right. care. I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Like I got to do a job. He got to do a job. For sure. He invites me to a Nick game in passing, kinda. Like man, I got a Nick game. Blah blah. blah. Yeah, yeah, I'll come. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right, cool. I like the Knicks. Everybody know I'm a Knicks fan. And then I didn't go because I think it was, it was either a rainy day or it was something I was doing yeah. with my kids. And I was like, I don't want to go to a Knicks game. I don't want to be around people. And not right. only that, he's one of the people that he always wants to talk. <laughs> he didn't feel like talking. I don't want to talk, my nigga. Like, <laughs> we already, it's like, I hate that. Like, yeah. As much, you know what I mean? Like, one of the people that just want to call. You want to enjoy yourself. You FaceTime and be like, bro, let me tell you what I'm doing today. Hold on, my wife is here. Hey, bro. It's like, bro. Hey, he did that to you? Bro, he would FaceTime me all the time. Wow. Like, it was so awkward to me because I'm, I'm, I'm not a FaceTime nigga. I, yeah, I don't like, FaceTime like, like, me. How do you mean FaceTime? FaceTime? <laughs> yeah, like, do I FaceTime? We don't FaceTime. Do FaceTime so what's the thing when men don't FaceTime men? Grown nah. men. Oh, no, okay. no, no, no. Maybe like family, but I'm not FaceTime yeah, I'm not, them yeah. my, unless they show me like, Oh, like you want to see somebody? I'm not just, you're not just calling your it's, homeboy. Like, yo. it's probably like three or four people in this game who I Facetime. Like, chubby baby and me Facetime, but that's because right. we gonna sit on the phone and laugh. But my nigga Burger, you know Burger, Burger yeah. me and Burger Facetime. But these are twenty year friendships. Yeah. But it's like we Facetime because we don't see each other that much. But like, just a random guy, like, yo Ray, what up? What up, nigga? <laughs> yo, so I was sitting here wondering, man, my nigga. I wanna be and, down and, and let's be clear. Cloud chasing is at its highest level sure. right now. And and I I pray that Tamir realize that she's being chased by a clout chaser. And he ain't built shit ever. And he's Thanks. used something that I built with her and interfered with our relationship. And that was the honest answer. And okay. I still love her. I wanted to win. I love her. I didn't want to not do the cuss report. I would have out because I didn't. I wanted her to be a part of the culture report or the guy show, but I didn't want to do all of it together. That's why she's not an artist spotlight. But I want to win. And if she's going to help me win, she'll help me win. Sure. But it's hard to help me win when you got a clout chaser saying, yo, I got this girl from Ray Dunn's podcast. You need to fuck with her. She getting hot. Nigga, we ain't even finished doing what we doing. Right. And that's, that's, how, that's why it's so hard to build championship yeah. teams. Because as soon as you show you can win, hit on somebody saying, oh, I'm going to help you. It's like, right. yeah, I'm I'm, nigga, get out of here. I built one, I built another. It's not a problem to me. Point. And it ain't no disrespect. <laughs> it's just saying, I built one, I built another. I've never seen, and she was, and she was always mad at the team. She would curse the team out because they didn't treat her with the respect she felt like she deserved. But it was one factor that she, no one liked to acknowledge. I pay them. For sure. They don't have to respond to you. Yeah. I pay you. Yeah. So I pay all y'all. So why? They don't have to respond to you. And, and if you're going to get something out of them, be a little nicer to them. Right. And it, it, was just, it was just a lot of difficulty. But I love her. I mean, I, now I, want to, I will produce a podcast for her. Oh, boy, when involved, because I believe she's a star. I just don't want to sit next to her and hear and, and have her do that. That's, what, that's on Tamira. You want me to see you guys? A... Okay, cool. Yeah, cut that nigga name out. <laughs> yeah. Lame ass nigga. I, was, oh, I hate that. Got that out the way. All right, now let's get into the show. Let's What's good, everybody? This is Ray Dangs, a.k.a. The Culture Referee. And if you were wondering who this beautiful woman sitting next to me is, is my sister, Tiffany Daniel Sai. Let's give it up for my sister. Everybody can clap. This is good. And my sister is, she's the most talented person in the family. And we started a family business, a signature scent company. So if you like smoke a lot of weed in your car and you want to get the scent out, you have to check out these scents. I know guys that use it for the weed. I know people that use it for cologne and everywhere they go to get compliments. We make candles. We make room sprays. We got them in kits. So if you want to buy something for your loved one or anybody, you know, that you care about, Hit us up, LorraineCo.com. And we're going to put the website at the bottom of it. Uh, but support this black business. Support this black woman. And order, I promise you guys. As a matter of fact, use the word gods and we'll give you 15% off. I just made that up. So if my sister <laughs> face looks crazy, don't get mad at her. I'll eat that. But guys, when I tell you this shit is incredible, you really should check this out. The best sense ever. LorraineCo.com. And we'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Thanks. Let's get into it. So Super Bowl, as we all know, Usher came out to caught up and Ray. I called, you called it. it out. Now I got to ask you something. Did you know? No, but 
I went to I seen Usher. I've seen his show about four or five times. Okay. And, it, and he starts every show with caught up. Oh. Okay. So I was thinking like, if you why wouldn't it in me it's kinda like habit. It's like Yeah. Like if you're an artist, you know you're when the formula stick with it. Don't right. be like, oh, it's a Super Bowl. I got to switch it up. Right. So that's what when I said, if he does caught up, I know he's going to be in his bag, which means because that's, and he was. He didn't Definitely, do DJ sure. Got Us Fall In Love. He didn't do none of the, like, he did love his without you. But No, he didn't do Love As A Friend. Yeah. Uh-uh. He, he didn't do without you. I can't run. I can't hide. He can't do that. You know, he, you know, he played. He went and did the blackest show possible. And he killed that shit. It was so Atlanta. And I and it. if it and and if anybody hated him, you are really a hater. For sure. That was one of the best to me. Usher show was to me honestly to me was better than Dr. Dre. I'm not gonna lie yeah. to y'all. And yeah. who was last year? The weekend. Rihanna. No Rihanna. Yeah. It was. A little, she was, was pregnant. She, she was pregnant though. So she but like Rihanna she shit to. that the staging was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy like, for sure. So he came out to caught up, okay. So you know, Alicia Keys came out, and they was the internet was always talking about how he was holding her, and they was, you know, too comfy together, and everybody came up with these memes. So if that was you guys' <laughs> wife or significant other, how would y'all feel about the way Usher was holding her? Uh, Got to handle it like a G, like Swiss did. Yeah, Swiss definitely held it like know a G. What's up? You know, ain't, that's just part of the internet the show. made a big deal about it though. Yeah, fuck the internet. <laughs> it was um, tough. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, man. I don't give a fuck if it's the biggest stage in the world. Don't hug my woman. Put put, put your ass to the he side. Was a bit put your waist to the side. Hold on, Usher, that little Usher hip make show. A little bit too comfortable. The reason why I say that is because everybody knows that that's my wife. For sure. And I don't believe he hugs Beyonce like that. No. I never seen see. Him. I'm trying to say what because you know what? That's everybody. The respect everybody has for who her husband is, and Swiss has the same amount of respect. It's just Swiss. Swiss played it off good, but he would have got a text though. <laughs> I should definitely got a text. text. Hey, my you don't think like during the rehearsal that like, they saw all of this? And now nah, I'm gonna get my lick back. I don't think no. I gotta take the same. I gotta do the same <laughs> one with your wife. So you gotta do his wife like. I have to. You have to know what I felt like. You have to know you what it felt like. The whole world like. just what? see you grabbing up. I'm and I might like. do a little. I might do a little drop on that shit and lift up. <laughs> <laughs> just a show, just a little extra. Just so because you ain't got to drop down. Listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> I ain't that much acting in the world. Ain't that much performing in the world. I know people be out here saying it's only acting. That's not to why me. I was like, not to me. My that, man wouldn't. That never. is not acting if I'm grabbing your titties for furrow. It's not acting. That's I'm really grabbing a titty. <laughs> now I might not be your man, but I'm really grabbing you. Like, nah, hell no. Nah, ain't that much acting in the world. Okay. I, I, I love how Swiss handlers just like a New York nigga would. Oh, so he was playing about it. Question though, <laughs> question New York nigga. <laughs> When the doors close and it's just him and his wife, is he handling it that much player, or you think he was really like checking her? He checked. I, it. I, I don't. I don't. I think he knew about it, so I think he was okay I, with it. I don't think that was part of the rehearsal. I, I think it was. Don't hug Personal. my bitch like that. I think it was perfect for the song. Don't hug mine like perfect that. Perfect for the song which before she By was the way, married. the song was rem the song was about an old time when we were once together. We was my The mood. song was about reminiscing about <laughs> love. It started off when we were young, you were you mine. Were like, my nigga, boo. they talking so, about my boo. I mean, did they ever have a thing? We don't know. Oh, okay. We don't know. No. But the fact that he was that close but to her being married that close was to her like said, crazy. My boo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we gonna move on. No, no, no. No, but, 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 but hold on, hold on. But we gotta, we gotta, we talking about Usher's performance. We gotta show some love to her. Oh, for sure. And her did her thing. A couple of years, Killed and I think it. that she was did her great. Thing. And um, and also for Little John and Luda, I love, I love. Little John looks a real good, and Will I Am, right? Nobody peeped how Usher slid under Will I Am's yeah, legs yeah, with, the, with, the, with the yeah. with the skates. That was crazy. I, yeah, did that. I didn't even see him take the skates I think, off. I mean, I was. I think, I think he wanted to let everyone know he's the greatest male performer alive. And I think that he showed us. I think sure. that he. I think that Bruno was great. Weekend is great. But I think he showed y'all, nigga. Bell always be bet on black. And that was a perfect commercial. For Real his black, not was like cocoa black, not like vanilla black, but like not. He got brown skin, so <laughs> was it Atlanta black? black. But I mean Atlanta black. Atlanta black. <laughs> like with the hood niggas is fucking with you and all of that. Like everybody, if you're gonna be black, you gotta stretch the entire. Thing if yeah. you're gonna be black, or you just go, you know what I mean? But I, and I, I thought it was a good commercial for his concert, his um, his tour coming. And up. he got, a, and he got a really good, he got a really good um, 
first week sales. He's about he's gonna do like eighty k, which is better than I thought he was gonna do. And got like what ten like six songs in the top ten yeah. now. So yeah, go Asha. We'll see him. But later. the crazy part that I be thinking is like, where do they go next? Yeah, like where do they go next for the Super Bowl? Like it's like only place you can really go is like Taylor Swift. Well, you know oh. it's gonna be in New Orleans. So I I personally think, um, Lil Wayne. I think it's gonna be a cash a a, a cash no, money melody. <laughs> Not a cash money medley. Medley. Sorry. Super Bowl. medley. At medley. The Super Bowl, Jack. <laughs> Please, no, they're not gonna do that. Yeah. <laughs> Master P ain't about to come out there and they say, Master P ain't about to come out there and say, See, you went nigga. You went, yeah, you went nigga. <laughs> we, you I mean, know, I can know, see them we, doing like some marching band shit, and then I can see them going into like some Mardi Gras. I mean, think about it. Hot Boys, they, they got. They got uh, definitely got twelve minutes worth of records. They could do, of course, that would keep, yeah, that would keep sure. the crowd Drake, captivated. Drake, Drake should do it. Yeah, Drake should do Super Bowl next year. Yeah. and he bring out. Little no, I mean it doesn't even matter. He should do it. I'm wondering where you go from there. Like, you don't think Chris Brown? No, no, hell no. I think Chris Brown is deserving of it. I just don't think they'll ever give it to him. By the way, I was at the concert last night. I saw Chris Brown. The fact that this kid is. Still moving the way he is, still performing. He's still goat status. I, I the Rihanna shit happened fifteen years ago. Really? That was fifteen years. Fifteen. Think about this. Chris Brown has been famous about twenty since about oh four, oh five, oh four, oh five, oh five. No, oh five. Because yeah, remember, my artist Noah was on Run It originally. Mm -hmm. I got the original and they demo. Took him off and put they took him off. On. I got the original demo. Mm. Damn, that's crazy. Me and Jewels be talking. That's crazy. I got to tell Jewels <laughs> that one day. Yeah. But speaking of Jewels, I'm letting y'all know. I, I I flew to New York. I sat with him. I heard his music. I seen his videos. That nigga is about. I'm telling y'all now. This might be the year, Jewels. I just got to put that out it. there. Hey, I'm just saying. Hey. <laughs> I, it was like it was like me and he my nigga we be texting and talking yeah. and shit and then I sh you know I seen a video and it was like watch sitting down with Clark Kent watch him show me Superman and I was like oh this nigga really is that deal so speaking of that I just had to say that but back to what I was saying Chris Brown been famous since 2005 the Rihanna shit happened 2009 you mean to tell me it's been four years of him being perfect Chris Brown and then 15 years of him being this guy and they still can't kill him and I feel so bad because he's so good. And one incident is holding him back. Now, I know people are going to say there's been a other, few other incidents. Yeah. But, I mean, that was the one that we know fucked well, He was up. young, though. You know, you live yeah, and you but, learn. But, you make but, mistakes but, as but, you grow. Uh, but white America is not that forgiving on young brown boys. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if he was, if, you know, if, if, I mean, just look at it like this. When Justin Timberlake pulled up Janet's bra, they blame Janet. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's like that's true. White, my, white America is not forgiven to young black boys that's sad, and young black need people. To be. I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, that you know, might be a good one. It might do Justin Timberlake. Might be. He did it already. Yeah, oh, no, he already did, did it. Did he do it by himself? No, I think he did it with Insync. Yeah, he did Insync. Nigga, he did it when he pulled up Janet Jackson. Right, ball. right, right. No, but that Crazy was man. that was on Janet's thing, right? No, that was theirs. Oh, okay. Because I remember Nelly came out too. All right, and I remember Nelly performed, and yeah, but that's the thing about. Okay, let's talk about the goat, Kanye. He has been. That's why I love you. Doing so, his his I don't know what to call him. His scheming is like just on his point. Line. Even doing, he paid seven million for a slot, a commercial, right? Mm -hmm. And then he said, got on the commercial and said, I spent seven million on this commercial, but I didn't have nothing for the no funding for the commercial. So go to Yeezy dot com and buy. Da, 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 da. He did That's a commercial. On iPhone. He did this shit on his iPhone. Yeah, he was nigga in the car. The fucking go best. to Yeezy.com. I got shoes. That I got nigga shirts. Is the fucking best. I got this. And guess and guess how much he made? Nineteen point three million. Yeah, but let me tell you, let me tell you something else you gotta pay attention to. And I don't wanna slight these people because obviously Usher and LA read our family. But Kanye's about to do hundred and fifty thousand first week off that vultures album. Oh, it's number one. Independent. By the way, Carnival was produced by a young kid I signed. Digital Nas produced Carnival. Mm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, that, that will be coming. That money will come this way. Okay. Oh, another plaque, the, I, another plaque on the wall. <laughs> Let's go, Jack. <laughs> by the way, Jack, you're going you to get the plaque just for that. Jack gets a plaque just to remind okay, me. Cool. Okay. But yeah, Jack. so um, the Vultures <laughs> album, um, my guys did. But um, that just speaks to how brilliant and why I say yay and is the best. And smart he is. Because... 
He spent. I, I, by the way, I didn't even see the commercial. I must. It, he was on his iPhone, literally in his car. Like, hey, you guys go to Yeezy.com. I got shoes. I got sneakers. That I is, have enough he money understands the, the concept of leverage your influence. I spent seven mm -hmm. million. I don't need. The, uh, he understands. It's the not concept. like he ain't have he don't the need money. The bells and whistles. He clearly has. That's them. My, but my point is, is it's not that he clearly no. has the money, but he he, he understands making the fans be a part of it. So now instead of him, he gets it. I wish entrepreneurs understood this. Entrepreneurs be so busy worried about being perfect, perfect. that they forget that everyone has a dream, even homeless people. Mm -hmm. And right. we want to see you get to your dream, but then we got to start at the nightmare then. Yeah, and it's crazy because his merchandise was twenty dollars. And that's another thing. He that was he wanted to build that model. And that's another thing. This new this dude is modern day Robin. I love Hood. him. That's and I'm Gemini. telling y'all, I, 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 that was the most. I didn't know. I didn't see the commercial. I didn't even hear about it. I I, I heard about it, but I didn't yeah. see it. But that's how you do it. You bring people into your world. Hi, I'm such and such, and I don't have the money to say the things that they're telling me to say. So I will ask you to check me out. You know what I mean? People will say, "Damn." I'm gonna yeah. check that person yeah, out rather than be sure. like, "Hi, I got my shit together. Look at me. Look how good I look. Look how my shit is. <laughs> Everything sure. is perfect. That's why you should." No, no, bro, bro. The reason why people like Beyonce so much is because they seen what she went through. Yeah. Like, dog. No, people want to see you go through your struggle. People want to see you go through your process. And Yeezy is back, and he's showing you that he's been doing B to B business, which is business to business, right? Mm -hmm. But right. once he went D to C. Which I think every superstar should be thinking, D to C. For sure. Why are you gonna, are you gonna go make a hundred million dollars from Verizon or make a hundred million dollars from Coca Cola when you can <laughs> make thirty million yourself with no stipulations? Because let me tell you something. What people don't what people don't understand is one word is one thing term to describe Kanye. He's a free nigga. Yeah, I love and it. And it's so hard to be a free nigga. Like a lot of people are free. Or they're kept, but the free ones. He's not scared to say, bro, do what every he dog, do. And you yeah. name, name anybody, I'll tell you who they own by. For name sure. anybody. Just name anybody, I'll tell you who they own by. Drake, Universal. For sure. Don't get me wrong, Drake is the boss over there. But if Drake gets, if a rape allegation hit Drake, yeah. Universal is going to punish him. Right, just like you know what I'm that. trying to say. Like it's like so your own. Somebody can like if Ye, anything happens to Ye, only people can punish him is the fans. Right, because he has a D to C relationship. Right, so yeah, that, I mean, I didn't even know that you got yeah. me. See, you got me hyped. Yeah, so and then the, um, another thing that was in that they said um, Kanye West had this. So he had got him bought him a seat in front of Taylor Swift. So every time I don't know if every time they cut the Taylor Swift, they see him. They yeah. see him with his mask. He Ma is mind smart. you, he had a mask on. He is this, smart. Uh, Alexandra McQueen mask <coughs> on. So he's just over there, just sitting there with his mask. So every time the cameras were cut to come to Kanye and his mask, yeah, they, and they, and so they, I guess she moved him. She moved. She him. got him moved out of that. Um, she got him moved out of there, and um, I. She got him. I, probably, I, I don't know. I don't know. Is she know. gonna put out the whole arena? By the way, by the way, well, by the way, this is a rumor. But that was smart, though. This is a rumor. Because Brandon Marshall said it. We don't. Like, don't Kanye didn't say it. Is. Kanye didn't confirm it. Yeah. So I just, I hate to get, like, go down the rabbit hole of a rumor because. Okay, we don't know. But no, no, it's, no, I'm just saying. I just, I, you get to the story, but I had to say it's a rumor because I didn't want to have a situation where it's like, you know how this shit goes. Like, it's like we talking. It's like, that's not even true. Well, we only talk about the news we heard, well, not what really happened. Well, that well. was, that was really. I thought that was if you know if it is true. I think that was really a good marketing, you know, marketing move on Kanye West's behalf. I just feel like that was really smart of him. Well, I think too. Um, what you got to think about is he sold out um, one of the arenas in New York in like eight minutes, and he sold out Chicago. Yeah. So all of these people are fucking buying tickets for a listening party. Let yeah. me tell you something. Unheard of. Let me tell you something. The, oh, so he didn't have a listening party. The, great, the, oh, the greatest move that Kanye did, if any artist wants to know why Kanye is the GOAT, it's, well, now, it's a many reasons why, but it's one thing he did that most artists don't do. Future did it too. Mm -hmm. But Ye really did it. But Future did it also. Is they embraced the youth. For sure. When Ye realized that he was never going to be invited to the big boy table by Jay-Z, and he knew that he was never going to be one of them. He went, that 2016 Life of Pablo album where he does a listening party, that was his comeback moment. And who was there? All the young niggas. Yeah. 
Playboy Cardi, Rich the Kid, mm-hmm. ASAP Rocky. Every young nigga was there. It was no old people. It was like, he is the leader of the young nigga the movement. Culture, and sure. they can't stop him for that. And if you are an artist out there, it's like me. Like, the, my peers and the older guys that before me might hate what I'm doing. But them young niggas... They Them young it. motherfuckers coming up, they love it. They like, he I go. They love it. And that's why it works. You got to embrace the people behind you if you want to get higher because that's the only people that push you to the top. For mm-hmm. sure. And that's why Ye is so big. Like, that's why I guess these, the banks turned on them. The arena turned Everybody turned on them. And they still can't kill them because there are these kids who when no one would talk to them, he did. Yeah. When no one showed that they cared, he did. He did. And that's what makes him the GOAT. Yeah. People think it's because I'm saying it's talent. It's that he understands the youth. For sure. It's like Kobe Bryant. Same thing. They hated uh, people before him. They hated him. Everybody before him hated him. This little cocky kid. Remember Michael Jordan was like yeah. that little kid on the yeah. Lakers. Wanna, like they hated yeah. him because he came in with so much excitement. But them Kyrie's, them, them motherfucking, all them young boys in the league now, Kobe, you can't tell them Kobe ain't their favorite player. Right. Sure. So sometimes you're going to make enemies on your GOAT mission. But those young boys, those young girls, those young people are watching and they are going to be up one day. And when they're up, they're going to be like, you were the one that helped yeah. me. And that's what Ye understood. That's what I understand. And that's what a lot of people don't get. These artists be leaving people behind, chasing big, chasing big. Fuck chase big. Build small. Yeah. Make the small big. Make the small big. Pour your, pour your water on the small. Make them big. So when they get big, who you think they're going to remember? You. Mm-hmm. I just feel like Kanye is always Kanye. Like, he's always himself, and, you know, he's true to himself. So, you know, some people get money and get all, and they change, and they're a different person. But Kanye, he kind of always stays true to Kanye, who he is. And that's something that takes him far, too, you know? Yeah, just being, being a genuine, a you know, just thing. him being Kanye, like, he never forgets where he came from. Yeah. He never forgets what he been through in life. And that's a good thing. That That's something that he I love always, He always makes you see the man. Yeah. Like, before these stup- superstars that you see our stars, fanfare, that's human. And he brought the human element to stardom. Like, he made fun of Kim. Yeah, my, my girl famous from a home movie. Like, mm-hmm. he, he never ran from what the regular people saw. For he sure. acknowledged yeah, he it. Lived in his and truth. that's why they, like, and I really believe that his goal was to become a billionaire, just to say, show it, lose it all by attacking the system, and then build it back up again. Sure. Man, let me tell you something. I'm fucking Gemini's, man. Ooh. Mm. Shout out to Gemini's. You know what else is a Gemini, right? Gemini? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh-huh. I know. That's, that's my baby. I know every. I know she's a Gemini, <laughs> but let me tell you about them Gemini's, though, you got to pay attention to. Donald Trump's a Gemini. Mm. Let me tell you something. Kanye and Trump are the same. They understand how to control the narrative, how to control the people. And I'm telling you now, I said this on the show. Then I said, I said this last week. I said... Taylor Swift has boyfriend has to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, you said By the that. way, yeah, it's the biggest Super Bowl in history. Yeah. Right? I called it and I said they the right team has to win because we all know in November Trump is Trump coming is, back. For sure. And I think America is getting all of the right moves trying to show we're a better place. We're ready. We're better. <laughs> Look at us. And then it's like, here come Trump. Like, bitch, I'm going to show you who we really is. Yeah. Mm. We really are some greedy motherfuckers that want money and, and nobody making money now. And they're going to put money over morals in America. And that's why he's going to win. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Okay. So how do you guys feel about Beyonce coming out with two country singles? Country singles. Shout out to Inc. My homegirl, Inc. wrote it. I'm so happy for her. Because this motherfucker has been so committed to the process of being a songwriter. Oh, sure. Mm. Shout her out to her. her. I mean, she's Long been time. out here. Ink was a busker. Ink yeah. was a busker Ooh. singing at Marta stations and all that other shit. I wonder if people... I want that. By the way, Ink, I'm going to send her this clip. This is shit I'm talking about. A girl... That's the story that America wants to hear. A girl who was singing on the train... Yeah. To survive, wrote Beyonce's new single, or co wrote Beyonce's new single. That's a fact. That's fucking amazing. That's this is what amazing. I mean by the storytelling aspect of life. Everybody's trying to figure out. I did a Beyonce single. No, tell them that you were homeless first. Yeah. Right. Tell them that you were homeless. Tell me a story. Then the, the record becomes bigger because of that. That's crazy. That I'm. Yeah, she's been, she been grinding for up. years. Cut that up, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Cut that up, Clay. Shout, shout out to my boy Killer B that produced it too. Oh yeah, I fuck. That's my nigga. Yeah. I fuck with Killer B. Killer B did it. Yeah, like, I've known Ink for a very long time. Too. Yeah, like bro, and like, I remember and, and, her. And by so. the way, I'm happy. Beyonce is so untouchable, y'all. Now you know them fucking them boys in them country stations don't want to support her. They don't. No, but you can't 
beat her. And the crazy thing is that I also know a couple of other things going on behind the scenes that I can't talk about, but they're about to take over and own this space. I'm going to stop paying attention. For mm -hmm. black people um, starting to do country music. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so well, take it back. They had <laughs> asked K. Michelle, like, how do you feel about Beyonce going over to uh, country music now? Because, you know, K. Michelle, she does the country music. So they was asking, like, how do you feel about, you know, K. Michelle, her coming in your lane? K. Michelle said, I love Beyonce. You know, I'm, she's welcoming her mm -hmm. with open arms. So, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited for the... Well, I mean, I, I think it's it's a wonderful thing. And she got, like, what, two songs? I think they're number one and number two. Bro, she does what she wants. She does what she wants. And that's why Beyonce. She, set, she set us up for it at the Grammys, though. Bro, bro, with with the hat and hey, shit. bro, bro. <laughs> if you went to the Renaissance tour, everybody wore was cowboy hats. Yeah. Bro, first yeah. of all, y'all forget something very important about Beyonce. She's from Houston. Mm -hmm. And Houston, that rodeo is a motherfucking real thing. Yeah. I never like, I remember when Lizzo was doing, or Cardi B. Smart was doing a rodeo, and they was like, the rodeo is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Bro, it's, bro I, just, I just love where we are now. I love where we are in our culture now because people are figuring out. The smart people are winning. The people who are dumb, who are trying to figure, or not the dummies, the, the people, the followers rather, they're all trying to figure out what's next. But the smart people, if you're smart in 2024 and you're creative and you understand the concept of influence and how to leverage it and the concept of pushing yourself without looking like you're pushing yourself, bro, you're going to run the world, bro. Like you could run the world. I, it's weird how people don't, are not paying attention and seeing it. Yeah. Like, the the you have to be the brand now For like sure. who's let me ask you a question who owns ford ford who owns it who's the ceo i have no idea Probably who's the ceo of tesla elon musk elon musk boom see what i'm trying to say it's like think about okay, it yeah, all the big okay. like who like like jay-z rock nation is one is the biggest most powerful black conglomerate it's ran by a black man jay-z we know him now yeah lebron and his team like Look at the people that's winning. The people that's winning are winning in front of the camera. Shannon Sharp. Yeah. Like, dog, it's a new world we living in. Everybody has a chance to build a community. Everybody has a chance to build a base and have that. All you need to make a million dollars a year is to get 1,000 people to spend $1,000 with you doing something. Or 10,000 people to spend $100. Like, or 100,000 people to spend $10. It's how you look at it. But it's, if you are smart and you have to be forward thinking unafraid you will make so much money going forward yeah this is the i think we have the window where i think in 2020 it was that that window where it was if you were uh if you were uh if you were up on the opportunity and you you knew um what's that thing that they call it when when pro, 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 prohibition mm -mm. Pro, prohibition like okay so prohibition law so if you pay, like, at one point in time, alcohol was illegal in yeah, America. Bro, that's definitely yeah. prohibition. So, so at one point in time, it was illegal, but they were still selling it. You know, it was illegal, right, though. Right. right. So, if in the 2020, if you were smart, you found a way to make money. 2024, you have to do smart things, and it has to be in front of the camera, or it has to be something. I understand but, what you're saying. Like, how we was, when we was in um, quarantine, and nobody could go outside, so we was literally doing, like, people was having twerk contests yes, everything. online. Mm -hmm. Like, literally. Betting online. On betting Facebook online. Or like, that's when they came up with the verses, and, you know, everybody yeah. was just like, because I know on my phone, I'll be in the house, and I'm like, okay, we're having twerk off Tuesdays on live. I'm like, oh. By the way, by the way, if you pay attention, that's, that what, was, Tory, <laughs> that's what Tory Lanez took yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's and, what and, but the artists who yeah. had the personalities won. That's what it was. Now you have to be smart. smart. You have to be smart. You have to be creative. Like sure. you have to do what Ye did. You have to find a way. And, you, and the most important thing is you have to have balls. Yeah. And you got to be like this show, for example. This is me laying my balls on the line. For sure. Like I was supposed to go look for a job. Mm. That's what I was supposed to go do. That's what the industry expected me to do. And I was like, now nah, put a camera on me because... I'm not going to look for a job, but I'm going to attract it. And then yeah. I attracted a whole fan base. So I was like, it's like I'm in front of a build, all the builders with a bullhorn, like, <laughs> let me tell you what I think. Let me tell you what I know. And nobody's looking out the window. And then I turn around, there's like thousands of people behind me like, we like you. And I'm yeah. like, shit. But that comes from me being unafraid to be creative, to talk, 
And I think if you're that in 2024, you're going to be so good. And I mean like aggressively that, not passively that, aggressively that, in your face that. Every chance you get, you're in their face doing something, yeah. getting attention, telling the story. Man, if you're that in 2024, oh my God, you're going to win. And if you're not that, and if you're not doing that, I feel bad for you. Because yeah. you're going to be mm-hmm. hitting people like me saying, Ray, check me out, bro. <laughs> I check out people that's other people checking out. Right. I don't check yeah. out people that DM me and say, check me out. I just think that like now in like the modern day, like compared to like when I was growing up, they just have access to so much like Instagram, you, you know, there's cameras yeah. everywhere. Like it's so much tools for them to access to be great now, you know, yeah. like I feel like and when I was growing up, like in the early 2000s, like no, keep going. I was that girl, like, you know, but. I didn't get to put it on Instagram. You know, right. I had people walking around with camera. I was on a come up DVD a lot of times with Fendi. Oh, uh? Yeah. You know, I was on, out. you know, DVDs, but you had to pop the DVDs in your car. Yeah, but, but here's the thing, though. Today's world, the, what you notice is with these kids is they have access to phones so much that they've lost the, the, the art of talking yeah, to each other. For sure. So, like, true. you'll learn more about your kid through their social media than you would just being in a room with them. Right. Yeah. Where... Back in the day, you had to talk to your mom and dad. Yeah. Now these kids don't talk to their mom and dad. So it's a lot of youth. And because the information is so abundant, people feel like the opportunities need to be abundant. Mm. Like it's like, if you scroll Instagram, you see a, it's a different video telling you what to do with relationships, yeah, what to do every with everything, day. every day. Everything. Everything. And that's my point. You see that, but, but you think that it got to be that easy. It is really, sometimes it's timing, but it's really just consistency. And I think that in today's world, sure. if you're not that, like I could pick a winner. I could tell who going to win. I could tell who going to win. You're going to win who ain't going to win. I could tell. Yeah. It's easy because you feel something, they're consistent with it, and you're like, oh, they're on their way. And all it takes is for you to see one other person talking about it. Or like a friend that you didn't know knew about it, talking about it. Then all of a sudden it's like, damn, that shit popping. Yeah. Perception is everything, y'all. Definitely. Perception is every fucking thing. And if you ain't understanding that, you're going to lose in 2024. Perception is more important in 2024 than reality. For sure. Perception is more important than reality with how you make money, how you build your businesses, how you do everything. Perception is everything today. It's not the reality. Bars. For sure. Bars. Okay, so Hitmaker <clears throat> was in the studio Sorry, having a nigga. debate with um somebody i don't know and he said what r&b song is better usher bad girl or chris brown no guidance usher bad girl not even close Ooh. hold on hold on hold on What's no you- goddess is the drake song yeah yeah oh no guidance <laughs> yeah that's a tough one no guidance I not because that. not the reason the reason i said it's because bad girl was bad girl is crazy but no guidance was really a moment that brought chris back him and Drake back for Remember sure. That was the first time. They were beefing. Yeah, they that were was beefing. the first time. Yeah. Okay, so you, which, what's your choice? Um, I think I like No Guidance more. I no mean, um, Bad Girls nostalgic. It's because, nostalgic, you know, but it's like it's a good song. It, it's a great song. I got it's, I got something no I want to tell that. y'all. Tell me how you feel about this. I really believe this. Oh Lord. SWV Week and New Edition. Can you stand the rain? are the top two R&B songs of, of the 90s by far. I love them. How about Rain On Me, SWV? Wait, you one. said New Edition, Can You Stand The Rain? Yep. I it love came that out song. in 88. I thought that one came out in 89, 90. 88. Okay, cool. Well, then, uh, then since 88. <laughs> I love that song. You <laughs> yeah, yeah, you correct me? I'm talking about Boston, baby. You know I'm going for no, Boston. No, I'm saying, no, I'm saying I, think, I don't think there's a... Well, I, uh, modern contemporary music... I don't think there's a group. There's a female group that have a better song than SWV Week. I don't think there's a male group that have a better song no. than Can You Stand so, the Rain. So you're not even going to... So Tell me I'm wrong. Mr. Atlanta, I'm you're not on even going to say TLC record? Waterfalls? What record? TLC, to me, to me, TLC has so many monsters that it's hard to pinpoint what their monster is. But... TLC does not have. Oh, oh my know. God. I hate because Chili is my sis and I fuck with <laughs> TR. But I'm telling you, one, now if they go against a versus, not even close. But one on one, me versus you, 
TLC does not have a song that lines up against SWV Week. At all. Like, when I was in school every day, that's Rick, all come you on, heard. sit on the couch. Rick, you come back. sit on the couch, bro, if you want. You come on, sit on. We can back back. We, get your mic there. If you want to sit on, I see you getting you turned up. Okay, no, no, okay. I like when they want to argue with me. I'm like, give it to me. I'm like, dog. And I think, and I don't think nobody's better than Jodeci. But I don't believe that For Jodeci sure. has a better song than Can You Stand still? the Rain. You coming now? Yeah, come on. <laughs> oh, you better. Oh, you gotta, okay. you gotta just stand right here with Jack so you can share the, the mic with Jack. He has entered the chat. Everybody give him a Rick Brule feel, my brother Rick. <laughs> welcome hey, to Rick. the welcome to the blue couch. Welcome, welcome to, to the couch. Hold on, now, what you say? Say something. What you gotta say? TLC and SWV? No, I did not say TLC and SWV. I like that you're here. See, that's what I like. I said TLC does not have one song that can directly compete. And the black audience will say it's better than SWV Week. Black audience. That changes it. That changes it. Because a lot of those TLC records are pop. A lot of those TLC records are pop. I know records, they are, so. but that's what I'm saying. Waterfall. You talk about black audience. Dog, dog, yeah, waterfalls. Dog. I wasn't even going with waterfalls. I wasn't even going with that. Bro, record. my favorite TLC. My dog. First of all, TLC. Baby, baby, baby. Is the, oh yeah, that, that's, that's the way T Boss come. Yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the, yeah that was a good one. And what nigga? What about your friends? Classic. Yeah. Nigga, creep. Classic. Oh, creep was a classic. All, red light special. I got way more. Yeah, but I'm saying, I think Week Why? is that much more superior as a song. Not just SWV and Vogue, fucking uh, 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 Escape. Well, I think Week they, is. Uh, uh, you name uh, Total. Week is like a black girl's anthem. Like every like I remember I was in third grade when that shit came. Oh, out. it's only one song that I think yeah, is a better reaction than sure. week, and it's not by a, f a group of girls. And it's probably Mary J. Blige. I'm, I'm going, going down. down. Doom 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 doom. Nigga, when that shit time yeah. on my hand, like okay, for how good or bad they sound. <laughs> they gonna sing that shit. But I'm weak by TLC and new edition. I mean, I'm sorry, weak by SWV and new edition Can You Stand the Rain? There's not two better. Name a black group that got a two song. Like name a name a record with them, or whatever. Boys to Men and the I had this argument. <laughs> it was Mike. I had this argument. Me and me and Shaka Zulu argued for this. Me and Shaka Zulu argued about Boys to Men End of the Road versus New Edition. Can you stand the rain, nigga? We called members of Bo we called members of Boys to Men. Oh. <laughs> We call Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, who produced K Standard Rain. Oh, yeah. We call L.A. Reed. We call motherfucker Tyree. Anybody you name, we was calling. What and and can you stand the rain one handedly? I love can't stand the rain. And the crazy part is, is that I can't I can't say it, but it was one handedly because somebody involved with End of the Road said. Candy Rain is can't, uh, can you stand the rain is better. Somebody involved in the song was like, "Yo, I ain't gonna lie, Ray, that song is better." Yeah. I personally I know that I, I can think it's count on you. What? Because I need somebody who can stand by me. Name another song. I, I, you no, do it. All time great. That is Bro, all time it's great. the best <laughs> one. All time great. And that album is all time. All time, great. but it's the best yeah. one. I can't think of another one right it's now. Thank you. I yeah, can't. it's the best. I, I want you to come to the I couch. I can't. So, what about like um, Jodeci Stay? Incredible. I'll take Jodeci best song is Feeding. Yeah, for sure. Nigga, take my money. So my house and my car. What, nigga? Someone hit a you. Ooh, what, nigga? You hitting them notes? I got, I got a little cold, so I don't got my, my regular. I don't got my, I'm actually a tenor, but I don't got my, uh -uh, I don't got my regular voice today. Well, my point little... is, is that I'm just saying, yeah. those two songs are the best two. I can't think of no group that if you could find a solo artist, maybe you could find a, a Tony Braxton, or maybe, but it's like, if you think groups, Destiny Child 2, they don't have nothing, nothing, nothing. Not, nothing that just like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Po nigga, that's the most potent, that's most of all. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Jagged yeah. yeah. ass walked out of heaven? Walked out of heaven by No, time. no. What? That's not even their best record. That's not even their best record. No, no. that's not even their best record. Married? Let's get married. Probably. Or, 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 or gotta be. Or I gotta be. Or, or, or yeah. promise. Or promise. Or promise. But Jack, that there is levels to this. You know, new edition, <laughs> that that's a whole. Yeah, shout out to Boston. So hold on, so hold shout on. out to New Edition. So hold on. Top five records. 
by a group. Eighty, 80s, 90s. Hold on, take my mic. I'm going to rest. <laughs> Top five records by a group. 80s, 90s. 80s, 90s. The day or two occasions. I take that. I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> the group, you said new edition, Can You Stand the Rain? 80s, 90s. TLC, baby. Since mm-hmm. we're talking 90s. Group, 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 group. Jodeci, Love You for Life. Mm. Mm, that was a good one. And TLC was in that video, wasn't it? Or mm-hmm. T-Boz was. Yeah, that Facts. was a good one. How about Case? Group. We said group. Oh, group. That's right. Ooh. was a group. Oh, so for real. Was that Kent? Candy Rain. Candy that was Rain a hot was record. That was a hot. But it's, it's levels. It's levels. That, okay. It's, it's a different level. New edition <laughs> and all that. That's a little bit different. I, I compare them with Jagged Edge. I right. would say, um, Guy, Goodbye. Ooh. Dun, 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 dun. But see, I don't know if that's their best record. If I would go with Let's Chilla, I like. I like Chilla. I'm chill. with you with Guy. I mean, but I think I would go Let's Chilla, let's I like. Let's Chilla for sure. Definitely. Mm. Definitely Guy. There's one more that I can't get right now that I got to think about with a group. <clears throat> but we think, let's see, we think 80s, 90s. Oh, yeah. We got shit. Tony, Tony, Tony. They damn near niggas. I can name about three, four records from them. Is that it with anniversary? Just me and you? What is it? Whatever you want, lay your head on my pillow. Just me and you? From the Boys in the Hood soundtrack? Is that Rafael Shadik by itself or is that all of them? I ask you, was Rafael Shadik by itself? Yeah. Pretty Brown Eyes Make Condition. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's another one. That's, that's another a, one. That's, that's one of my Pretty Brown, Hold on. Pretty Brown Eyes by Nick Condition a, a is a very close second is that their to. Second, that's yes. Yeah. Pretty, that bigger, what, what, no, what wait, man would that be? Wait, it's um, not as big as that? Absolutely. Or swinging. No. No, oh, yeah, still ain't got nothing. Freak me. Let me lick you. No. What? got nothing. Dog. Right. Dog. Y'all are talking about songs that are, uh, you have to be ingratiated okay. in our culture to know. I'm talking no, about. So you don't think there's no white? You don't think there's no white people singing that? No. I don't think. I think. I think if there's white people singing a, a silk song, it's one out of one hundred. Yeah, it is. But forever, my lady is not. Okay, so this is how you got to measure it. So before you get to arguing about songs, first thing you got to do is go to artists. And and look at their biggest song. So if you go to if you go to um, um, Drew Hill, their biggest song would probably Ooh. be "Sleeping in My Bed," right? So that it's like "Sleeping in My Bed" better than "Can You Stand in the Rain." Uh, see what I'm trying to say? Then "Boys and Men" best song is probably "End, End of the, the Road. Road" or "I'll Make Love to You." Yeah. Yeah, I'll make, I make love to you. I make love to you. No, no, no. I like incomplete. Oh, the regular Mariah is one sweet, sweet day. One sweet day. But, but that, that song, that song like is not a, good. That's like a death record. That's just one day. And out of that, boy, you need to be give this nigga a mic. I like this <laughs> nigga. This nigga, <laughs> get out of the crowd. The mic for Jack, man. What's up? Talk, nigga. We need yeah. fact checks, nigga. Okay. We need fact checks. No, I'm saying. But one sweet day also was one sweet day, one sweet day. Just felt felt like okay. So I'm in the music business. You know when someone is making a song. For it to be a hit, yep. yeah, it was contrived. It was contrived. contrived. Like you know, they were like, in this part, it's gonna be a play. It's gonna, a funerals forever. Like I believe Jagged Edge knew when they made "Let's Get Married." This that is gonna. gonna that's it. You know, that you, gonna you know what it is. Yes. It's like we. So what I'm telling you is, is that I don't think "Can You Stand the Rain" even fit. like we can. Can you stand the rain? Don't feel intentional. They just feel like they caught a wave in yeah. the melody. And they, they would just say, feel like they, they caught would... a wave in the melody, and we just ran with it. And like I don't think there's another group that could sing that record. No. Bruh, like well, nigga, nobody else sing that, and it will sound like that. What? I don't think nobody, because so. because because right? nah, but it wasn't Four. that they use they use they all vocals though. Like Johnny leads the verse, nigga. The hit comes fucking Ralph on the hook, cause I, nigga they. Man, come on, man. That's why I say it's unfair to go against a solo artist because it's so many voices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the real deal voices. Johnny Gill's. By the way, Johnny Gill, my my my. What? All time. Okay, so can I ask you guys a question? I'm sorry, we, we get, we're just rambling. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. I want to Take the lead, Brie. Take so the lead, Brie. This concerning, you know, so, you know, I don't know if you guys are married or not. If you was married or you got married, what would be your wedding song? Luther Vandross, here and now. Ooh. Okay, that's a good Ooh, one. No I like that. Ready. No Ooh. question. Jack? <laughs> Jack? Um, Alicia Keys, Drake, Unbreakable. What? Um, no. Mm-hmm. 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 
Okay. I'm you ready. Ask me, yeah, I'm ready. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you okay. got your answers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That'll be mine. Right, you. <laughs> <laughs> Ray said, "Fuck Ray's that nigga. Like, I ain't never no, getting married." No, 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 it's not that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, that's such a, that's such a loaded question, because it's like the kind of supposed to be the greatest day of your life. Yes. The song that so what would be the song it. that you would play at your wedding? I want to know. Aston Martin music. Oh shit! Right. Just me and my baby. This nigga gotta be the one. <laughs> that's crazy. Shout out to Justice League. I thought he was gonna say, "Just me and like right. to the hook. She can sing the hook." Just me and my boss. Okay, what? yeah, nigga. Okay, come on, nigga. Vibe. Pull off in the Aston Martin. I mean, but you gonna play more than one song at a wedding? But that, but I'm that, saying I, you're oh, man. You know when you yeah, walk yeah, down. Okay, so I'm gonna yeah. lie, my, like my like. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna just say this. I think the be, the best wedding song of the last ten years is Major. This is why I love you. Yeah, that's this a big is why song. I love. And Wale too. That was the question of my heart. Is the question yeah. in my that's the, been the, a big um, wedding song too. What's it? What's it called again? Matrimony. Yeah. Get that nigga yeah, the mic. Get that nigga the mic. Make him the mic, Jack. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But um, give Rick like, the mic. I like, I like, I like, a, I like a Marie. Why don't we fall in love too, though? It's but we like, already fell in love. Jack, Jack, it don't Jack, matter. Jack, we, Jack, we Jack, 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 you got one answer, Jack. Jack, Jack, Jack you got an answer, Jack. You got an answer, bro. You got your answer, bro. Oh man. Okay. What's the next question, Brie? Okay, so you know I got to get a little raunchy on y'all. Spice it up a little bit on y'all. Okay. So Sukiyana, she had posted Jack's girl. She had made a. You like it? Though. Anyways, go ahead. Go ahead. She had made a oh, post boy. saying, "If a man flies you out, does that mean y'all gonna have sex?" Me personally, I feel like we have to talk about that first. Like, okay, so okay, so flying you out is an overnight date. Yeah, you fly me. It depends on where you're it flying me to. Also, overnight date. It is. A, you are accepting. How do you know you, I'm no. flying you overnight though? How you know he's not flying around for like a day or two? Oh, oh man! See, look at all these men I got. They're ready. Fly, <laughs> listen, flying you, flying a woman out is an overnight date. Yes. If I so that's just very similar to me saying to you, Sabrina, stay with me tonight. Okay. That's why flying you out is. It's like stay with me tonight. We fuck it. Like we fuck really? it. Really? That's how y'all feel about it? It's an overnight date. Like some women, so are you gonna let her know? Okay, first? okay. So let me ask you a question. Okay. If a guy comes to you and tells you, mm -hmm. "I want to take you to dinner," yeah, it means way different than he said, "I want to take you to lunch." It's a way big difference. Right. It's a different How is lunch, it a difference? Lunch can be lunch could be business. I'm spicy. L no, I might take you to Magic City for lunch. So yeah, what's the see, difference? See, that's, why I, that's why I like because, you for the show. Lunch is lunch, but dinner is basically saying. Hey, we gonna have dinner and everything goes good. You gonna come back with me we after? We gonna go back yeah, after slapping. lunch though. That, that's like that's like no 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 no. That's like me saying to you like, yo, if I take you to dinner, you stay the night with me. And that as crazy as that sounds, yeah. That's how crazy it sounds when you say, if, I fly, if you fly me out, I'm not spending the night. Now unless she says something to you like, I gotta be back to work. No anymore. no you know oh no when you fly so out oh when you fly like, a girl so out they be giving you you gotta pay for their work days off. That's what I'm saying. So okay, so your definition. Of How much money you missing? Why you gonna be going these three days, baby girl? Six hundred dollars. Hey, that's six hundred. So that's an automatic yes for y'all. I'm not. What, what, what I'm are we just saying? What are we supposed to do? Okay, because okay, this is what I feel personally. Okay, I feel like if man was like, okay, I want to fly you out. First of all, okay, I'm asking questions. Like, am I get you got me a hotel room? Yeah, like am I staying with you? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm, see what I'm saying. But I don't have to feel like I'm obligated to have sex with him because he flew me a flight. But, 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 but if you say to, to him, him, I want. If you say to him, I want a hotel room, my but own room. You just told him I'm not fucking. But you, but y'all feel like if I'm flying a girl out, like no, it's a go. I feel like flying some. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that. Flying someone out is considered an overnight date. If you're not going to spend the night with someone the first day, okay, that the day night, but if you're not comfortable spending the night with someone, which means you, sh you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't be on an overnight date with them. Right. And you shouldn't be fine if you're not going to have sex. Like, that's the easiest way to fuck. Sorry. <laughs> easiest way to fuck or take on somebody on a trip. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like. It's, guaranteed, it's almost like it's guaranteed. And I'm I not saying that every like, time I've done it, I've gotten some. Because it's been something that it but didn't. Would you but you I mad didn't want it. like if you flew a woman out and she I didn't? didn't was you upset? Like, damn, I just flew you out. You didn't give me none. Did you feel a certain kind of way? I think the only I'm time so I, different. I got so many stories I want to tell. Right? I ain't going to tell right on, now. Let's no. talk, right? I think, let's I talk. think the only time a nigga could really be mad, um, in my experience, is if you flew someone out. And they like was on their period. It was like, what the fuck are you coming out here for if you're on your period? <laughs> Her mouth works though. That's true. You know what I'm saying? 
That's true. You can't. You can't. Like, okay, like so one. let me tell y'all. So I. By the way, my sister, you know. my only sister sitting in the room, and I'm trying not to talk because like my only sister sitting right there. I know, there. and I see, but I had to hit y'all with it because it was already in my. But notes. I mean, listen, no is no, so it's like if it's no, yeah. it's no. Okay, you but because but y'all are missing change. the question though. What's y'all the, are missing the question. If a man flies you out. As a woman, should we feel obligated that we have to, like, no. he's flying me out to have no, sex? No, no, no. You should not feel obligated. That is the wrong language. And if language. we don't have sex, I'm, no, you'll be mad. you should not feel obligated. But you should not go if you don't want to. Okay. That's all I'm saying. You should not feel obligated, but you shouldn't go if you're not down to do it. Be- or if you're not down to do it and you know you're not, at least tell them ahead of time so you, can book a, so you can book a flight the, for somebody else. Off the drone. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? I had to... <laughs> You gonna book a flight? Somebody get booked on this flight. You just, a, you just his choice. You just okay. the first choice. It's there is not a, there is no limit of women. There's no limit of women who are trying to get flown out somewhere. There's no shortage of that. There's a woman trying to get flown out in every apartment complex in America. <laughs> so if she don't want to go. You just gonna call the you next call, one. Listen, this is what I wanted you. Sometimes you gotta tell me this. What I want to do. Look. We're going to be out of town three days. I want the most fun I can have with you. Yeah. Okay. I like that because you know why, Ray? You laid it on the table. You told me before I even got there what I'm expecting. So I'm like, I already know what to expect, you know? Yeah, but I be getting mad when I don't get other shit that I shouldn't expect, but I expect because I expect it all. (laughs) So let's change the subject. I don't want no problem. Okay. I want no smoke. We we need all the smoke. I got y'all. Okay. So we're going to get into the Godfather report. So Godfather question. Let's go. Yes. So this one is this one was crazy. So an elementary school principal placed on leave after she held a fake school shooter drill, mm. where she pretended to shoot students with her fingers and ban- and banged on windows. Reportedly told students, "Boom, you're, you're dead. dead." Okay, as a mom. <sighs> okay, so okay, so I feel I feel like up and down about that. Okay, I, I, let me say something. There's a principal in America. But this is real life. Hit this me is- out. There's a principal in America. That's one of y'all age. That's one of our age <laughs> right now. Meaning that they're just like us. Right. <laughs> Meaning that there's some stupid motherfuckers in the world. And these new principles are not like the principles we grew up. Like no, our principles all. that we grew up with, they lived in the house on the hill and no <laughs> right. one spoke to them and they was educated. These new pr- principles is fucking. They, these new teachers are fucking. These new, like, <laughs> they're, everybody is living their best life. These principles be having... Uh, they be going uh, for drinks. Uh, no, no, they be having what they call them Instagram pages, Finsta pages. Yeah, they That's stu- they be having, fans and all oh, that. They be like, and, and I think that okay. So let me just say something. <clears throat> I want to say something to America, dear America. We have to take it easy on educators and principals. We have to give them even if even if they do something stupid like sleep with a student. Hear me out while I say okay. that, because it is probably the worst, most unappreciated job in America. Because it is the most important job that's the least paid. Yeah. It is like, it's more important than the police. It's more important than the fire department. It's more important than everybody else. And they don't get paid no money. So if someone is motivated enough, I'm going to use that word, (laughs) to educate for fucking $40,000 a year, $50,000 a year. Man, sometimes they deserve to take a drink with the goddamn. Wait, class. wait, wait! That's how much they make out here. Yeah. Shit, principals in New York make no, like no, no, 200, no, no. Principals. Yeah. What? Principals are the top of the of the food chain. No, no, but that's also the top of the food chain. I'm talking about teachers. Teachers in New York probably make like seventy, eighty thousand. Seventy, eighty thousand to teach some badass kids that ain't yours. Yeah. Every these day. kids are bad. These kids are fucking these bad. Kids are and they have bad. access they to all this information. Phones. They got cell phones. They can record you. Yeah. And then yeah. they, they got, they got pronouns school, so and shit. No, we these was kids bad, got but pronouns. these kids are bad, bad. Like, no, no, these kids got pronouns. They be like, uh, uh, my name is Michael, and I go by they, and teachers have to call them that shit. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> like, imagine the shit that these teachers have to deal with now. Yeah. yeah. Forty-seven thousand, ninety-six thousand. Mm-hmm. You gotta assume most are around the forty-six thousand mark. That's four thousand a month before taxes, bro. And you living in New York City. They are. We should be giving charity. We should. Well, they asked for us to tip to tip the waitresses. We should right. be tipping teachers. No, seriously, bro. I'm serious. We should be, bro. We are the worst thing that can happen to America is for people to realize that they can make money teaching, make millions of dollars teaching, and go from teaching a class. To teaching a, a a community and they can make three hundred thousand dollars a year doing that and never leave their house. 
I'm telling y'all, we better start being nice to the teachers, giving everybody passes, because that's the that's the job that you don't want. No, I don't know no kids that want to be teachers because they don't make no Not money anymore, and they don't and they don't get thanked for nothing. Nobody appreciates them. I mean, I think that um, probably her her approach was yeah. wrong, but I mean, the reality is that shit like that happens, happens right? So I think. I don't. I'm not m- totally like. Maybe mad she was at a it. little aggressive with it, and she should have went about it right. another way. Because I mean, to me, that's just like a fire drill. Like, how many times have nah, we? No, but it, but it's a difference between it's a difference between shooting with your finger. It, boom, no, no, it's dead. a difference between <laughs> boom, you're dead, and boom, <laughs> bitch, you're gone. Like, it's a big difference. <laughs> we don't know how she was doing it. So, how would you feel if your kid came home and was like, told you, you know, you she had a. a Something like that going on at her school. Well, I think something like that you need to talk to the parents about before you do it. That's true. Yeah. So I would but, but, expect. But, but that she's that a principal. Happen. Bottom line is this: principal, we give you a pass for this because there ain't a lot of principals out there, and there ain't a lot of people that want to be principals. And we got to be respectful. That's why she people. was on. But I'm hate. trying to tell you, that's why I be. That's why I take. We gotta take it easy on police too. All that shit, because if they stop somebody breaking your goddamn house, who you gonna call? Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters ain't goddamn coming. <laughs> Unless it's a ghost, you know what I'm saying. But my point is, is that we gotta we gotta start taking it easy on essential workers. So uh, that that principle suspend her for a week or two, but don't get rid of her because there's a lack of people that want to be educators. That's my answer as a as the godfather. Okay, so okay, we, there was a woman that was on Hollywood Unlocked, and she was saying how she pays half the rent for her man. She pays for half. She pays for dates, pedicures, haircuts, because in this economy, she understands. What you guys think? What's your take on that? That's cool. I, don't, I have a problem with that. But so you feel like we, we got okay. So let me say something. There's two things I got to say to this. We got to give America, black people in America. We have to give black people a pass on these kind of conversations. And I know people are saying black people are the only people talk about this. That's because we're, we're just now figuring out what modern life looks like for us, right? Because there was a point in time where there wasn't, generation, there wasn't generational wealth. There wasn't those options. And these, the, the, their main goal was just keeping a family together. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? Their main goal is just keeping a family together. So we just got to just gotta give grace to where we are now because... We don't know what it looks like. Like, like we don't have. My father is dead. Our father is dead. Like, it, what? Where's your dad? Dead. Okay, cool. Is your dad in your life? No, my dad in Boston, but you know, That's a, so, so, rolling stone. So here's, here's the thing. See how normal that is for us. Yeah. So we're the new generation of like fathers wanting to stick around for their kids. We're the new generation of like fathers who want to be better and wives that want to be better, and we don't know what it looks like because we've never had. For sure. So. I, I, and I'm tired of the conversation too. I am tired of the conversation about 50 50. I don't think there's open. nothing wrong with 50 50. But I'm, but I'm saying mm-hmm. the conversation is necessary in where we are right now. White people were probably having these conversations in the 40s and the 50s. Yeah. When that's probably when it mattered. Black people, we just getting there where we have like black billionaires are normal to us and a black president is normal to us. So we are defining what relationships look like. But I will say this the second thing I'm going to say is that. Black women have to take it easy on black men. Yeah. Because every black man is not going to be able to buy you designer, is not going to be able to buy you Birkins. And, and, and women are very unhappy today because women have unrealistic expectations mm-hmm. of what a man is supposed to do. So they're unhappy and they also are not, because they're unhappy, they're not treating the men nice, which means yeah. that they're not getting the things that they would get if they were treating the man nice. Because we don't acknowledge that Every man, because like some niggas, some women be like, that nigga cheap. That nigga cheap. Yeah. No, that but nigga, you can't was, buy no, it hit me out, hit me out, hit me out. They'll say, that nigga cheap. That nigga's cheap to you. <laughs> that nigga might be blowing the bag on you yeah. because you stress him out and you make him feel good. So yeah. women be like talking about dudes or even when they be like, oh, he ain't fuck good. He didn't fuck you good, baby, because he probably didn't <laughs> enjoy you. No, I'm being honest. No, no, I'm, being, no that's but I'm, real. I'm saying for the sake of having this conversation, we have to be honest. And it's almost like women are just lining up saying, black men prove that, black men show me that you see that I'm valuable. And value is not based on the outside, it's based on who you are on the inside. So what really happens is, is bitches be so focused on getting money from niggas yeah. mm-hmm. that they don't get to know the nigga. That's right. true. And then once the nigga get the pussy, they get, she got a couple dollars, which was nothing to him, and he on to the next, and you saying niggas ain't shit. That's why you got to have Baby your girl, own bag. You, no, no. Even if you have your own bag, the problem is, is that women don't 
women think men should court them. I've had the same cycle with a thousand women. We met, I liked her, I was courting her, she started liking me, I fucked her a few <laughs> times, I got bored with her, yeah. and then she said I ain't shit. Well, the reason why I got bored with her was because while I was learning her, figuring out what she liked, courting her, she wasn't courting me back. Right. So now she likes me, she don't know shit about me, and I ain't got time to teach her no damn more because I don't feel like you didn't, you didn't learn one to know in the beginning. Mm, so right. I say if women want, if, if these conversations are healthy, but we should start having them with each other in person, but with someone who we want to date. Like, why am I arguing with a woman that I'm never going to be with how I, a house should be ran? Right. Like, nigga, some houses are 50-50, some houses are 75-20, <coughs> some houses like mine, all my houses are 100% me. But that's just because of where I'm at in life. Right. But it's also a lot. And I'm a lot. And I expect a lot. And if I don't get a lot, we're going to have a whole lot of problems. Okay, can I speak on it? Go ahead. Okay, so I feel like as a woman, when you're dealing with a man, like, it's cool. It's nothing wrong with going 50-50 because... As a woman, I don't want a man to fully take, do everything for me because then you got the power to take everything back and throw everything in my face. But see, that's that's so 50-50 that, but, is good. But that's still bad, though. That's still because you're not receiving because you don't want to be reminded. No. That's whack, too. If you if if, I, if a man gives you, he should not throw on your face. But... And then you got the power to I control. Got, I got to say I'm something. Going, you got to let me finish. Okay. But... You can, you, you can finish. Don't give him a reason. And a lot of times... I'm telling you, women are takers in today's society. And the weird part is that I don't know one woman that's up and spending her money while she up. Up chicks are, up chicks are still spending the up nigga money. Yeah, because y'all like to spend though. No, no, we don't. What we, about Oprah? Y'all do. We have to spend because, Dream, let me ask you a question. Okay, ask me. <laughs> <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, with one being the least and 10 being the most. How important is dick in your life? Getting dick in your life. Getting right it. now, dick's like a four. Okay. You know how dick's a four? Why? Because you can get dick anytime you want. Exactly. So why would it be a 10? And now I'm ask, focused now on my ask life a and my man money. the same question. <laughs> ask a man the same question. Jack, <laughs> on a scale of one to 10. How important is pussy? Well, well, Jack's married, so that's a well, hard... for me, I mean, it's, it's... When you weren't married. Um, when you were single. It was like Jack. a seven or eight. Wow. Yeah. I like money Crazy. more. I like pussy. Me too. So, I mean... No, that's important, but here's my point. The reason why it's high for him, because it's harder for him to get. You and him can go out. You can fuck 10 guys Ooh. in three-day period, and it take him to fuck one woman. And you could have fucked more if you wanted to, Ooh. because men are easy. And vagina is always, vagina is the world's number one extract. There's nothing. I don't care if you say oil, gold, <laughs> diamonds. That's there's crazy. nothing in the world more valuable than pussy. And Why the reason I like this. It's, exactly. <laughs> because what's the point of having the diamonds, the cars, the houses if you don't have pussy that is shared with? Mm. Men don't go on solo vacations, baby girl. I know we that. don't want to be nowhere where the women ain't. Straight men, at least. <laughs> oh, women me, are going on a four girl vacation. Don't care if it's men Turk to Turk with each other. Yeah. We don't want to. We ain't twerking with each other. We ain't sitting around smoking cigars with each other without chicks around. We need something to look at. So my point is this: is that it's much easier for you to get up the male anatomy than it is for the male to get the female anatomy. It is. And that's why when niggas get money, I hate that women be trying to make them stop cheating. My nigga. I've been working my entire life. To you get deserve here. to cheat, right? But that's wrong, right? This. Summer. Why do you feel like you deserve to cheat? Can I tell you why. Can that's I tell you crazy. why? Can I tell you why? Because along the journey, I don't believe in cheating. By the way, let me just be clear. Black men don't cheat. No, <laughs> I'm not. I just don't believe in cheating. I believe cheating is doing anything you wouldn't do in front of your lover. If if you flirting and you won't do it in front of your boyfriend or girlfriend, that's don't cheating. Don't do it. Yeah. If I'm gonna flirt with you, I'll flirt with you. Our mind is standing right here. I don't right. care. Yeah. Or I won't flirt with you. But, but I don't. You're like a small percentage. Though. I know, but I, but my but maybe that's true. But I just don't believe in that. I just don't believe in cheating. But my thing is this: is that if a man is on a come up and he's working his ass off, and along that come up, he meets a beautiful woman like yourself, and he's like, "Wow, you're who I'm going to have children with. You're who I'm going to build houses and a life with." But I still got a lot of shit I want to do over there yeah. that I don't know if you want to be a part of. <laughs> that if you want to, come on. But if you don't, 
I want on days like this, I'm gonna go over there and do things that okay, I want to do. See, this is the way. I, this is the way I collab because. But everything over here has to be straight. Okay, but look, that's crazy because y'all will still cheat. So that woman was to bring another woman in to you know y'all what y'all had go going on. You would still go cheat with another uh, woman, huh? Well, because <laughs> men like variety. <laughs> Men like variety. So it's like, when, when does it stop? Like, when when does it? When does a man ever get satisfied enough? When I can't be honest with you, like I'm really disappointed right now. Um, I thought when I hit my 40s, my sex drive was going to go down. Stop. No, and it's getting better. It's higher. <laughs> no, I'm really, I, no, I'm no, really seriously, disappointed. I understand him though. I'm really disappointed in myself. So for me, it's like I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. I'm I understand just, that. Part. I'm just thankful it still works. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> nothing worse than one and it can't have it. <laughs> but I'm thankful it works and um, I'm really disappointed. But I will say this. Them 40 year olds look really good. I don't I don't think 40 year olds look that good I'll when be 40 I was next year, y'all. Listen, 40, 40 is like them 40 year old women, I don't know. New 30. Them 40 when I was when I was 20, 40 looked like 55 <laughs> now, 60. Them 40 year olds today, I'm telling you. So they when do y'all ever get satisfied with like that's enough pussy for me? Like, oh, that's enough females. I'm done. I want to settle down and when, finally. Well, okay, let me be ask you a question. One I got a jack. My life. Let me ask you a question. Okay, ask me. What kind of food you like? I like pasta. Ooh. Pasta from where? Pasta from um, say the olive Watch this. Watch this. Jack, I got it. Pasta from where? I like pasta from, from Marciano's. But you'll go to You'll go to Carabas. You'll go to a nice pasta yeah, restaurant. Yeah, right? I'll make my Okay, own. what if we told you you'll get free Maggiano's for the rest of your life, but that's the only pasta you can ever eat? Okay. Okay, so now you're at n- other nicer tables. We we hanging out with governors, and they're like feeding us the chef's pasta, and you're a pasta lover. You're not going to taste but that you pasta. Can't compare all pasta. you're going to taste it. it you're full. <laughs> you get full, but all you're going to taste it. Of course, I'm going to taste that's it. That's what we want to do. Right. You cannot just want to taste pasta with pussy. You cannot do that. Oh shit! <laughs> they both start with P. <laughs> and if I'm being See, honest, this is if, the only being, advantage of working with all my, y'all my, my men. Point, but my point is, is this: I don't think it's natural for women to want to be with more than one man. I don't think it's a natural thing. I think that I mean, there's some who is you naturally, don't know that there's some, I, but I don't think it's. I think those are, they were like harassed or sexually abused as a child or something like that but my point is this is that there there are uh um go ahead i'm, I'm, just, I'm not gonna go no finish <laughs> so with that being said with the 50 50 thing so you feel like it's because a lot of women are like clowning her like girl why are you going 50 50 and those to- women are probably single yeah and, and those women are probably sharing their man listen let me tell you something definitely sharing their a man. conqueror so even though she's going 50 50 He's still cheating. Now, if Basically, he's cheating and they doing 50 50. Now, so you should go 100 because you're cheating. Listen, so I'm making now, you go now that's a law. We should start a thing called God's law. Yeah, if you're going to cheat, you're okay, paying here's everything. A God's then law. you go cheat Uh-oh. and pee. Here's the first God's law if you are paying 50 50 bills with your woman, you should not be allowed to cheat. You get no pass to cheat. Because the time that you spend cheating, you could be spending making more money to make sure that you take some stress off your woman's ass. But if you're okay laying down with a woman knowing that your woman is out there working and pay half the bills in the house, you don't deserve that woman. <laughs> Can we agree to God's law? God's law. God's law? Okay. God's law. Message, uh, message y'all, that's what, it's something else I tell you. <laughs> I'm just, no, but help you out though. But on the same token, if a nigga paying for everything, and he doing Then I should let you cheat in peace. I'm not saying let... You're gonna do it anyway. I'm saying, I'm <laughs> saying, come to an understanding. Life is about negotiations, right? When I figured that out, life became better. Like, let's just sit down and talk about what you want. So basically, talk man, about what if you're I gonna want, cheat, figure out what we want. With her. That's Am I tripping? <laughs> Am I sitting down? Let's talk about what you want. Like, I can tell you the most important things to me. Most important no, thing to I me is a sense it. of humor. Sex is number two. Sense of humor, and sex. If, and then the third one is you got to be open-minded. If you're those three things, then, I, you know, you, you might be a little loud. You might not speak proper English. I couldn't get, we can work all that. <laughs> we can work through that. No speaking member English. But you got to be able to laugh with me, and you got to be able to satisfy me in the bedroom, and you got to be open to the ideas that I have because I'm radical like that. And if you are those things, you're going to work with me. So 50-50 is cool with y'all? No. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm cool. With it's cool. I'm cool with 50 50 if you are cool with 50 50 as a woman. And, and if that's who you are, cool. Just give okay. black people grace because we're just having these conversations now. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? 
Yes. No, no. It's one a lot more. else Give I got to say. Give but us one, I, more. I, Give I, us one more. Give us one more. One more. One more. Let's not rap like that. Give <laughs> us one more, then we rap. Okay. There was um, a post that said, is this one modern song that is good and possibly better than the 90s sample? So they sampled Rihanna... Um, what is it? Um, Wild uh, Thoughts. Uh, Wild Thoughts. And you were talking about the and Carlos Santana. Yeah, Ma- was it Maria Maria. Maria? So they're basically saying that Rihanna sampled his song. Wait, she sampled the song. And it sounds better than it the original. It sounds better than so the original. So what was your answer? A sample that sounds better than the original? I think the sample. No, give me a, you have a song. So do you have a song that you think the sample, the new song sounds better than the original? Um, no. Um, I got one. What? I'm going to say uh, Tory Lane Say It. I was, that was what I was about to say. Tory Lane say it. Yeah. Because I ain't gonna lie, Brownstone, Brownstone say it was fire, but Tory Lane's. Yeah. Benny Blanco and them, they killed that the shit. Yeah. They're gonna, gonna love me. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna tell you another one. Oh, it's gonna get me in trouble. Yeah, tell me. Blueberry Fago is better than Johnny Gill, my, my, my. Ooh. And I ain't gonna really? lie. One bad bitch and she do it. I say so. Two big forties and the big ass drink. Like it's and my 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 is ingratiated in the beat. It's so yeah. fire because my 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 is good, but it's not even. It's great. It's actually great. But I think Blueberry Fuego is probably. It's just like one inch bigger than than my my my, and I don't know. It's because he got that melody. It's just like one point higher. I'm sorry. Uh, one point <laughs> higher. Uh, then my my my, but one bad vision. I do what I say. So what? I'm trying to think of another one. I know a whole bunch of them. Um, damn, it, I know it's another. I know one. one. Polo, rich boy, throw some D's. It's better than I call your name. Yeah, I call your name. Like it's, oh, I, yeah. and I love I call your name. But throw some that. D's yeah. in one of the. That, ooh, yeah. that was Willie definitely. Hutch, international players anthem. Oh and it, yeah, yeah. It was you. Oh, oh yeah. Come so on, bro. UGK? That's what I do. <laughs> Kanye West, Jay Z, Otis. Yeah, that was a good one. Come on, man. So we gonna rap? Okay, let's rap. Okay. So, shout out to our sponsors. Shout out to uh, Tone Carry. Shout out to Two Lost Distribution. Shout out to Ko Water. Shout out to Yoko Vaca. And shout out to you for taking time out to watch. Shout out to you for sharing. Shout out to you for fucking with us because this is hard what we do. Because you never know who's going to see. And anybody that took time to see this, I just want to personally tell you, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you. And I hope to run into you. I hope that I'm giving you, we've given you something on this that has made your life a little bit better. I just had to put that out there. 